On today's Locked On Giants podcast, we're making the case for quarterbacks. Should the Giants take a quarterback in the first round or should they wait? What would we do? We're going to talk about all that coming up next on the Locked On Giants podcast. You are Locked On Giants, your daily New York Giants podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode of the Locked on Giants podcast is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the promo code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Hello, New York Giant fans, and welcome to another edition of the Locked on Giants podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast family, your team every day. I'm your host, Patricia Traina, P. Train, credential member of the New York Giants media for Locked On, as well as for Giants Country over on the Fan Nation Network, part of SI.com. And a special welcome on in to my Blue Crew community members, my everydayers, my newcomers, and everybody in between. You're all appreciated and loved by yours truly. Thank you for spending part of your day here with us on the Locked On Giants podcast. And if you're watching us over on the YouTube channel, please subscribe to the channel Click the little notification bell so you get notifications anytime I post a new video. And of course, like this video. It would help out tremendously. So thank you in advance. And on today's Locked on Giants podcast, we're going to start with some making the case arguments. Now, as you heard in the intro, I'm going to make a case for and against taking a quarterback in the first round. And so the first segment, we're going to talk about why they should, the Giants should take a quarterback in the first round. Then in the second segment, we'll talk about why they shouldn't. And then in the final segment, we'll talk about what they should do. Not what I would do, to be clear, because I think a lot of you know what I would do. I'm going to talk about what they should do, just kind of based on all the evidence. So basically, it's an, it's an argument for or against a quarterback. And I know a lot of you are probably saying, what, what argument is there? It's not even a question. They should take a quarterback in the first round. But we're going to go through all the scenarios and all the reasons why they should, shouldn't, and then what they should end up doing. So that is our agenda today. Again, welcome on in to everybody. Let's get going here. All right. Going to start off with a case for a quarterback. All right. There's several reasons. Now, when I was drawing up this list, these two, these two lists, obviously there was a lot more reasons, I think, for a quarterback. And I've got to start off with Daniel Jones's injury history. Now, regardless of what you think of Daniel Jones as a quarterback, and you know, if you think that he's regressed, that he never was the guy, that oh my God, we're still asking what he can be after, you know, six seasons, the injury history, I think, is the biggest factor in what's going to drive this quarterback decision. All right. It is a very deep class, as you guys know. And, you know, it, it's like, if you think you need a quarterback, you take one and the giants, you know, they they'll sit there and they'll say, oh, you know, Daniel Jones is going to be our starter when healthy and kind of give off the air that, you know, oh, we don't need a quarterback nonsense. They need a quarterback. All right. Um, and I'm just not saying that to, to spoil what's coming up here, but in my opinion, they need a quarterback. It's a deep class. You take one because if you end up not needing that quarterback for whatever the reason, you develop him and you trade him down the line. Okay. This deep class, historically deep class, by the way, has a lot of good prospects. If you don't get one in the first round, you could probably get a decent starter in the second round. And before anybody says, well, you know, if you don't get a quarterback in the first round, what good is that? You've got to take a quarterback in the first round. Folks, there have been starting quarterbacks that have come in round two and upwards. You go and look down the turnpike, for example, Jalen Hurts is a good example. He was taken, what, in the second round, I believe? Um, down in Dallas, Dak Prescott was, what, uh, fourth round, um, you know, the famous one, Tom Brady, was taken, I think, into the sixth round. So, yes, while the odds of getting and hitting a home run in the first round for a quarterback are greater, it's not a slam dunk. You can just as easily miss on a quarterback as you can. Uh, in, in, you, you can miss on a quarterback in the first round as you can in rounds two, three, and so forth. So this is a deep class. There's a lot of talent. I don't think, you know, all the guys are going to go in the, in the first round. Um, there's going to be probably an initial run on quarterbacks 
in the first round, especially at the top of the draft. And then there'll probably be another run a little later on. But somewhere in that that round one to round two range, you should be able to get yourself a decent quarterback if you have done your due diligence. All right, another advantage of taking a quarterback somewhere in the first round, you get him on a five-year deal, all right? By that, I mean, as we know, all draft pick contracts are for four years. Well, first round picks, you have the option year, which means you could put them on five years instead of four years. So that is an advantage because if you're with the Giants and you're going to say to yourself, okay, we're going to let the kids sit for a year and we're really not going to find out what we have in him at this level until year two or maybe even year three, depending on what they do, you, knowing that you have that extra year, that option year to pick up is kind of a safety net as opposed to if you get a quarterback in the second round, then you only have him for four years. You don't have the option of the fifth year. All right, another big reason, let Brian Dable pick the kid that he wants and mold him accordingly. Now, no disrespect to Daniel Jones, but Daniel Jones has gone through multiple systems. He's gone through multiple coaches. He's had some shell shocking to him, you know, with the offensive lines that he's been playing behind. At this point, I question whether or not he's, he's damaged goods. And, you know, you throw in the injury history, like I mentioned before, all the changeover, and you just wonder if he has hit his ceiling at this point, if 2022 was the best we were going to see from Daniel Jones. Because, you know, the, the Giants looking to build on that in 2023, in the six games that Daniel Jones played, didn't look very good. As a matter of fact, he looked like he, he um, regressed. So now people will say, well, you know, his, inju- his, his offensive line was injured. He didn't have Saquon Barkley. All right, you know what? He's got a new offensive line this year, hopefully a better offensive line, and he doesn't have Saquon Barkley anymore. So no excuses. I'm sorry. A good quarterback finds a way to raise the talent around him. And last year, I'm not so sure Daniel Jones did that, except for maybe two quarters of play in that Arizona Cardinal game where he led the team back uh, from from a deficit. All right. The Texans uh, formula for rebuild, you know, I'm going to refer to this because I'm really fascinated what the Houston Texans have done. You know, they got themselves CJ Stroud, who was on a rookie uh, contract and they're building around him. So, you know, putting a quarterback on a rookie contract when you are trying to rebuild a team allows you to put the resources around him to support him so that when the time comes and you have to pay him his next contract, everything is put in place. With the Giants, I always felt they did things a little backwards when it came to Daniel Jones. So they drafted him. They didn't have um, you know, an offensive line in place. They didn't have a, a stellar um, receiving core. I think they all they really had for him was Saquon Barkley. And they had to kind of make up for what they were lacking along the way. And that didn't help Daniel Jones. So, you know, I think Daniel Jones, if he's put in the right system with everything in place, I think he could be a good quarterback. It just didn't work out here. So as far as I'm concerned, you know, time for a fresh start. So, you know, again, just following the Texans rebuild and and comparing it to where the Giants are, the Giants aren't really a, a deep playoff team. I think the Texans are a little further along in their rebuild. But the way they have gone about building that team is, in my opinion, the way the Giants need to approach building. Get a rookie quarterback in here on the lower contract. Use the, the savings once you you know are able to get out of Daniel Jones's contract and build up the roster around him. The roster, I think this year, on paper, a lot better than it was last year, but not complete. You know, there's still some question marks and still things we need to see, but I think it's headed in the right direction. Okay, so in the, those are my uh, reasons for a quarterback in the first round. Just don't mess around, you know, get your guy. Now, will it necessitate trading up? It might, but we'll talk more about that um, in, in the next segment. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you could still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. 
But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of quarter one, 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA is available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Locked on Giants podcast. I'm your host, Patricia Trana, and make sure you keep it here Monday through Friday on Locked on Giants. I have all new episodes for you every day. We'll do some more making the case. I'll have um, some guests coming up um, as we cruise through to the draft. The draft will be here in less than a month. Actually, the draft is going to be here. Uh, let's see. It's one, two, three weeks from today. It's coming up. It's coming up, folks. Going to be exciting, and I can't wait to bring you all the coverage leading up to the draft and, of course, over draft weekend. It's going to be a very busy time, and uh, we will have extra shows for you over draft weekend because there's going to be a lot to talk about. So, And this is down the line, but I know I do this every year, and I know a lot of you like it. I do intend to invite my Locked On College hosts who represent the schools that uh, the Giants pull their draft class from to come on and talk about the different draft picks. I know a lot of you guys like that series that I do um, in the past. So I'm going to do it again this year because you guys like it. So uh, you know me, I, I aim to give you guys what you got, what you want. So <laughs> that's what I'm all about. All right, let's get back to our topic here, making the case for or against quarterback in round one. Now we talked about all the reasons for compelling argument, I would say, right? But let's talk about some of the reasons against taking a quarterback in round one. You will probably have to trade up to get a top tier quarterback. All right. So the Giants are at six. It is, you know, a lot of draft analysts are projecting that, you know, the first three, possibly four, four, uh, I'm sorry, the first uh, four of the first five picks ahead of the Giants could be quarterbacks. You have teams like the Minnesota Vikings who probably want to trade up to get a quarterback. Denver is said to want a quarterback. So you not only have the teams, you know, the uh, the Bears, the Patriots, and the Commanders, all of whom need quarterbacks, you have the other guys that I just mentioned, the Vikings and the Broncos who need quarterbacks and who may look to trade up ahead of the Giants, knowing that the Giants need a quarterback. So if you're the Giants and you, you know, you want a top tier quarterback, you want your guy, you're going to have to be prepared to deliver a small king's ransom. So here's the question that you have to ask if you're Joe Shane. Do you feel that your roster is pretty stable as is? Now, you're not going to fill all the needs. We talk about this every year. You can't fill all the needs in one offseason. But do you feel that your roster right now is stable? Do you feel like you have enough on the offensive line? Do you have enough on the defensive line? Do you have enough at cornerback? Running back, receiver, you know, do you have enough there to where you can afford to give up draft picks to move up? I'm not so sure the Giants do, but the Giants, of course, they view their needs and their roster a lot differently than how I view it, um, I have found over the years. So, you know, and this, not only would the Giants have to trade up, you know, to get a quality quarterback or one of the top tier quarterbacks in the top of the draft. But even if they were looking at trading back into the bottom of the first round, now I talked about a trade that I think would work in yesterday's show with the Kansas City Chiefs, who were 32. That wouldn't cost the Giants as much, but it still would cost them draft assets. So if there's going to be a trade to get a quarterback, to make sure that they are in a position to get the guy that they want, they're going to have to weigh you know, the cost of getting this guy versus the cost of giving up an asset 
to address another need. Now, you know, you might say, well, you know what? They need a quarterback. So who cares if they give up an asset and they can't get an extra running back or they can't get an extra, I don't know, defense alignment. It's all things you've got to weigh because again, folks, you want to make sure that the system you put in the field, the personnel that you put on the field, that everything is as close as possible to being ready so that your quarterback eventually succeeds. And this is a deep class. You know, some might say that, you know, there's no pressure to get a quarterback in round one, that you can get it just as good of a guy in round two. You know, it's all in your perspective. You know, they say beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Well, sure enough, that's what applies here. Okay. Another reason not to draft a quarterback in round one. This is a, I don't want to say a make or break year for Brian Dable, but after what happened last year, I think it's fair to say that expectations are a little higher than they might have been uh, a year ago. Well, actually, they, they've been scaled back is, is probably the best way to put it. So if you're Brian Dable and you go and you take a quarterback in the first round, chances are that kid's not going to be able to help you right away. He's going to sit for a year. So in some ways, you can make the argument that taking the kid and having him sit buys you a little time with job security. But in other ways, you can say, well, wouldn't they be better off taking a position, a player at a position that can help them right away? You can make that argument. You know, you could say, well, a wide receiver one will help them right away. But then again, you can also turn around and say, well, what good is having a wide receiver one if you don't have somebody who can get the ball to them? So it, it's six and one half a dozen of the other uh, in that case. But, you know, you can make the argument that this is a team that is not one quarterback away from making a championship run. But then again, are they? can you honestly say that they're one receiver away from making a championship run? Probably not. So, all right, one more uh, thing against a quarterback in round one. And this, to me, is really not a valid reason to make any kind of argument if you're the Giants, but I'm going to throw it out there anyway. Again, no sure things in round one. You can draft a guy and he could be a total bust, or you could take a guy and he could be the next Patrick Mahomes. You just don't know. You look at the teams, you know, who have drafted quarterbacks in round one and their expectations, you know, the Browns, do you think the Browns ever anticipated that Baker Mayfield would move on? Probably not. You know, you can make the same case, you know, for the Giants. Did you think the Giants thought that Daniel Jones would struggle the way he has over his career? Probably not. So you have hits and you have misses in the first round. And this applies to all positions, but especially with quarterbacks. It is not a surefire thing. That said, you can't be afraid to take the chance. If you have done your due diligence, if you have done your homework, you should be okay. It's the teams that take the shortcuts and who, you know, instantly fall in love with a quarterback that get themselves into trouble. And I think that's kind of what happened with the Giants with Daniel Jones. You know, they just kind of, you know, they did due diligence on him, but I think they just kind of fell in love with him, you know, based, I want to say based on the senior bowl performance that he put out and you, you can't do that. You have to look at the big picture, you know, flaws and everything. And I question whether the Giants really did that back in the day with Daniel Jones. I mean, I still say to this day, they overdrafted him, you know, six was too high for him. It was a reach, but he's here and it, it, you can't go back and you can't uh, get a mulligan on that. So um, this being a critical year for the Giants, they have to show some kind of improvement. Drafting a quarterback and then having that kid sit, you know, then can you make the argument that, oh, you know, but we have a new quarterback, so we, we need another year. Will John Mara be patient if, you know, the Giants don't draft a quarterback? Um, you know, would he, you know what, what, how will it play out? Will it necessitate a, ch a coaching change if the Giants have another bad season? So these are all factors that go into the pot, into the mix. So that being said, obviously a lot more reasons for as opposed to against. But what do you think the Giants will do? What do I think the Giants will do? Now, not what I'm going to do or what I would do, because you all know what I would do. 
But what do I think the Giants are going to do in round one? Okay, coming up right after this. Stay tuned. Hey, Giant fans, if you're having trouble finding those last-minute tickets to your favorite concert shows and sporting events, Game Time has you covered. They offer a wide selection of seats complete with seat views to help you decide where to sit, and they're constantly offering last-minute tickets through flash deals. There are no hidden fees. You're going to know exactly what your deal is before you check out. And Game Time even has tickets available as late as an hour after an event starts, making it truly the best place to find last-minute deals at amazing prices. Want more reasons to trust Game Time? They offer event cancellation protection. And if you find your tickets in the same section and roll for less elsewhere, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. So go on and take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the promo code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Terms apply. Hey, Giant fans, passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. And with all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. So go on and keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply, eBay's guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Locked on Giants podcast. I'm your host, Patricia Trena, and it's verdict time. What should the Giants do when it comes to quarterback? Should they trap one in the first round? Should they trade back into the first round, trade up, get a quarterback on day two? What should they do? Now, this is what I think they should do, not what I would do. What I would do, obviously, is I would go wide receiver. And I wouldn't think twice about it because I think the Giants still have some needs that they have to address. And I don't know that I would necessarily want to give up draft assets, at least not this year, to move up, especially, you know, given the cost that it might entail. So what do I think the Giants are going to do? Folks, I think the Giants might agree with me to a degree. Okay. By that, I mean, I think they sit tight at six. They take a receiver, which is, you know, going to be such a big help to whoever the quarterback is, whether it's Daniel Jones, Drew Locke, Tommy DeVito, you know, J.J. McCarthy, Drake May, whoever it is they get. Uh, ultimately, a number one receiver is going to be big. I still say that the Giants may look to trade back into the bottom of the first round. If it means giving up their second round pick this year, and a pick next year, that to me is a little bit easier to swallow than to give up a, a small King's ransom to go from six to, I don't know, four or, or whatever. I don't think, you know, I, I'd be surprised if the Patriots would trade down. Um, I'd be, be surprised if Washington would trade down. Um, and, and again, you know, I know scared money don't make money as they say, but I just don't see the Giants trading up. I mean, I would be very surprised if they do. I would be pleasantly surprised if they do, but I'm not so sure they do it. I do think what they will likely do is trade back into the first round, the bottom of the first round, for the sole reason that I mentioned earlier in segment one about a case four. And that is they would get their quarterback on the five-year plan or have the option for the fifth-year option. Um, if they can get back into the bottom of the first round. So I would say, you know, if I'm guessing and, you know, look, it's anybody, but anybody's guess. All right. But I guess it's as good as yours. It's as good as the next guy. But to me, if I'm the Giants, I think it makes the most sense. Get the receiver at pick six, then see if you can't get back into the bottom of the first round by giving up your second round pick 
and maybe a pick next in next year's draft. Even if you've got to make it a conditional pick of some sort, maybe do that. I don't know. But um, that's how I think they will approach it. And it just so happens to align with how I would approach it. So I know I said that I, I would tell you how I think they would approach it. Um, so it's going to be a mix, I think. The Giants, they still have some needs. You know, you can make a case for cornerback too, obviously. Obviously, receiver, we've talked about that ad nauseum. You could talk about um, offensive tackle. You could talk about defensive line, safety, um, all kinds of needs. You know, tight ends, a sneaky need. We've talked about all the stuff before. And I just think the fewer draft choices you have to give up in order to move up to get the guys that you want, the better. And look, the other here's the other thing that I'll mention real quick. A lot of times how the media and the outside draft analysts view the prospects and the value doesn't always align with what the NFL community is looking at or thinking about. So we'll see. We'll see, for example, if J.J. McCarthy is, is this hot prospect that suddenly catapults into the top five, like some people are saying. We will see if Drake May of UNC, if he falls down the board, as some people have predicted might be the case. So that's really the beauty of the draft. You know, it's 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 hit and miss. It's anybody's guess. So that's how I see things playing out. That's how I think the Giants will play it out. But of course, we'll have to get there and see. And I can't wait to bring it all to you. All right, Jane fans, that's going to do it for today's episode of the Locked on Giants podcast. Be sure to keep it here. Tomorrow, I'll have an all new Making the Case for you. And uh, then we'll send you into the weekend as we get ready for a whole new week of coverage. So thanks again for spending some of your day with me. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow, Giant fans.